hello my people now welcome back again to my channel if not today be your first time when you the congo go bless you i beg before you come out may you like this video and may you still subscribe to my channel for now one adult they always they come here i say now god go bless you now now maybe the worry girl yeah, don't come again today i go they talk about the traditional marriage when they, they when they get for is your land they get different marriage for is your land i go talk about them for this video i go see tell on the procedure if you want marry for a journal and the procedure when you need to pass the things when you need to do i go see tell on today and also i go tell on their marriage list so make on listen as i take on through everything the Ijo people are the fourth largest ethnic group in Nigeria, mainly occupying the coastal region of the Niger Delta and extending to the part of Ondo State. They have many clans, Beni, Tarakiri, Mei, Kalabari, and so on. As such, there are differences here and there, but the basic marriage procedure carries through. Now, marriage is one aspect of the people's tradition that shows the rich culture of the people. Marriage has been defined as the legal union between a man and a woman to be husband and wife. The approaches to marriage differ from place to place depending on the part of the ejors, but the principle are mainly the same. There are two forms of marriage in Niger land, both involving bride wealth. The first one is small dowry marriage. In the small dowry marriage, the groom must offer a payment to the wife's family, which is typically cash. In this type of marriage, the children trace their line of inheritance through their mother to her family. This means that when they grow up, the children have more choices as to where they can live with their fathers or mothers people let's now move on to the second marriage the second type of marriage is a large dowry marriage which means that the children belong to the father's family these marriages are rare and wives are not usually from the local community there is high rate of polygamy among the Ijaws. Most men have at least two wives. Each wife has her own room and kitchen, usually in a single house. Ijaw wives are not ranked and ideally. Each is treated equally and has equal access to her husband. As the Bible put it, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. It is usually a good thing of joy for a parent to betroth their daughter to a young man in another family. Of course, only when the parents have consented to the request of the young man, even as the cordial relationship of two distinct families will and supposedly so. For that's meant by the process, some slight differences exist here and there in the marriage process. But generally, the following are the basic procedure in your marriage. Now, we have the ware ogigagbolo, literally means to knock. This is the introduction to enable both families get familiar. The groom and his family are expected to come with gin and other beverages. If he is not Ijo, he can bring cola nut, though it is not customary for the Ijo's to break cola nut at such gatherings. We have in this stage Piyawuru. This is a bottle of gin presented to the father by intermediaries before the start of negotiation of the marriage please my people this step when are they take on our past this procedure then when are they cause so it they very important for every is your marriage or ask any is your person they go tell you so if you day here you won't you won't just learn about their culture may you listen or if you won't even get her for mind say you won't marry your woman now these things you need to know it go day easy for you so make her continue we get another one Egberigba Wuru. 
This is a bottle of gin and a specified sum of money presented to the father or the spokesman to introduce the elopement of his daughter with a husband. Usually, the intermediaries are given time to return at a later date for feedback by the father. We have another one, Bibiri Okuba. This is another bottle of gin and a sum of money for the father's approval of the marriage. The next one we have is Shihikumo. One bottle of gin and a said amount, usually token, which is offered to formally inform the father's in-law family and request them to remain at home on an appointed date for the payment of the bridal price. Now this is the list. One, a list of items is given to the groom to return with Unlike other ethnic groups, the job list does not contain food items except for salt. Traditionally, the list includes 20 liters of gin, a canoe and fishing net, lantern, mortar and pestle, box of clothes, money and parents of the bride, tobacco, money for the maidens, outfit for the parents, Money for the bride's waist, just money for my bride. Money for brothers. Times have changed. Most people now live in cities. So the canoe and fishing nets are now monetized and handed over to the brides alongside money for her waist. We have Wari Benite. This is interpreted to mean the family is now assembled for the bridal negotiation. We have another one, another procedure we call Wofiete. This means to open the negotiation offer of one bottle of drink and yet another token. Another procedure is Fitibi. This is interpreted so me the actual bride price usually accompanied with five or six bottles of gin. We have another one, Yigi Okwaba. This is a senti amount given to the mother-in-law, mother of the bride. Then another one is Uguni Kame. This means entire entertainment of the strangers. Here, the couple and the groom's family on visit to the father-in-law are fed lavishly and presented with a bottle of drink. At this stage, the couple are presented formally to members of the public present at the event, leading to the usual dance to traditional music, even as the public will be treated to some azure delicacies. We have the last stage, which is Wosirite. This means that at the end of it all, the visitors present a bottle of gin and seek permission to leave and depart afterwards with their bride. If the marriage was in the village, the groom is expected to go and pay homage or greet members of the bride's family, along with his heart troop from a list which will be given to him by his father-in-law. This process is to familiarize himself with his wife's family. Permit me to say, once these procedures have been completed, the couple are officially man and wife as tradition demands. However, if they decide to go further to solemnize their marriage in church or way of holy matrimony, it is entirely up to them because it is their wish. That is it, my people. You are now officially the proud husband of an azure woman so this step and this procedure when i tell her now that be the only thing when you need to do for your land you carry their woman go house so my people on i don't hear the whole matter so i go see you now again for another video i beg if you never subscribe to my channel i beg make you subscribe i go see you now again bye <music>